Hello, my name is Dr. Lisa Van Wagner and I am an assistant professor of medicine and preventive medicine in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. Over the next few minutes, I am going to talk with you about our recently published manuscript in gastroenterology titled Alcohol Use and Cardiovascular Disease Risk Among Patients with Non-Alcoholic Fatty Liver Disease. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, is the leading cause of chronic liver disease in the U.S. and is also associated with a high risk of cardiovascular disease, morbidity, and mortality. In fact, cardiovascular disease is actually the leading cause of death among persons with NAFLD. In 2015, a survey was conducted that asked U.S. adults about their alcohol use and drug patterns and it found that over 90% of U.S. adults aged 26 and older reported at least some alcohol use in their lifetime, most of which is what we would term as moderate. There have been several large population-based epidemiologic studies in the general population that have shown consistently that moderate alcohol use, compared to no alcohol use at all, is potentially associated with a decreased risk of mortality, particularly cardiovascular disease-related mortality. Since cardiovascular disease is so highly prevalent among persons with NAFLD, it raises the question as to whether or not moderate alcohol use might be beneficial to actually decrease cardiovascular disease risk in persons with NAFLD. However, to date, this has not been studied. Therefore, the goals of our study were to assess whether drinking any alcohol versus no alcohol at all was in fact associated with decreased prevalence of cardiovascular disease risk factors as well as markers of subclinical cardiovascular disease. We hypothesized that we would find the same thing in a NAFL population that has been seen in the general population, that moderate alcohol use would be beneficial for cardiovascular disease risk profiles compared to no alcohol use at all. In order to test our hypotheses, we utilized data from the coronary artery risk development in young adults, or CARDIA study. CARDIA is a longitudinal prospective study of the determinants of cardiovascular disease risk in just over 5,000 black and white young adults who were enrolled in the mid-1980s across four study centers in the U.S. There have been nine examinations completed to date representing over 30 years of follow-up. Over that time, detailed clinical data has been collected, including prospective assessment of alcohol use and alcohol behaviors. At the year 25 exam, CARDIA participants also underwent CT scans of the abdomen to assess liver fat, as well as CT scans of the heart to assess for coronary artery calcification and comprehensive echocardiography. Our study population utilized data from the recent year 25 exam, which took place during 2010 to 2011 and just under 4,000 CARDIA participants attended this exam. We then excluded those participants who reported heavy alcohol use or who had other potential causes of chronic liver disease or secondary causes of liver fat. In the end, we had just over 2,470 participants who formed our NAFLD eligible sample. Of these, 570 had documented NAFLD on CT scan and of those, 58% were classified as drinkers. The mean age of the NAFLD population was 50 years, 54% were men, and 46% were black. In multivariable analyses adjusted for demographics, as well as the cumulative burden of multiple cardiovascular disease confounders, there were no significant associations between those persons who drank and those who did not in terms of multiple subclinical abnormalities in cardiac structure, function or hemodynamics, prevalent coronary artery calcification, or the risk of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, or diabetes. These findings remained unchanged in multiple a priori sensitivity analyses, including excluding people with potential binge drinking behavior. So in summary, in a biracial sample of middle-aged adults with NAFLD in whom alcohol was prospectively assessed, moderate alcohol use was not associated with a beneficial cardiovascular disease risk profile when adjusted for multiple confounders. Therefore, a recommendation of cardiovascular disease risk benefit for alcohol use in persons with NAFLD cannot be made based on our current findings. Prospective long-term studies are needed to compare the effects of various alcohol types on hard cardiovascular disease endpoints among various racial populations. 
that would be useful to help us better understand the complicated link between alcohol, NAFLD, and cardiovascular disease.